This is number 16 on your review sheet. The directions ask you to prove whether this is even, odd, or neither. When you want to find out if something is even, you do the Y symmetry test. For the Y symmetry test, you change all of the X's in the problem to negative X's. So that's what we've done here. You have to watch your exponents. If you have a negative raised to an odd power, it will remain negative. If you have a negative raised to an even power, it will become positive. This one is a negative raised to an odd, so it becomes negative. This is a negative times a negative, that's a positive. What we have now does not look like our original problem, so this is a no, so this one is not even. So we go to our next test. If this one had been even, we would stop because something cannot be both even and odd. So we go down to our next one. The test for odd is the origin, symmetric about the origin. When you do that test, you change all the y's to negative y's and all the x's to negative x's. So that's what I've done here. Then you do the math. Remember that a negative to an odd is a negative. So that one becomes a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. And I have a negative y out here. Remember when you have a negative y, what you want to do to get the y by itself is change all the signs. So when I change all of the signs, what I end up with is exactly like my original problem. So yes, this one is odd. This is number 10 on your review sheet. And what I've asked you to do is I've asked you to find the vertex. I've asked you to find the axis of symmetry. I've asked you to find the minimum and the maximum. So we want to look at that just a little bit. If I look at this one and I want to find the vertex, I'm going to use the vertex formula. That's how I would do it algebraically. If you want, you can do it on your calculator. If you pull it up on your calculator, you can see the vertex, which we'll do in just a minute. If I use my vertex formula for h, and I put my minus b over 2a, I get negative 0.25 for h. To get k, which you have to have h and k to be able to do the rest of the problem, I take negative 0.25, place it in the original problem, do the math, and I end up with 4.125. So h is negative 0.25, and k is 4.125. Now, the vertex is represented by h and k. So my vertex is negative 0.25 and 4.125. That's h and k. If I look at the next part of the problem, this problem asks me for the range. If I look at this on my calculator, my problem is concave down. I can also look at the a, which is negative 2. That's less than 0. Anything that's concave down has a range of negative infinity all the way through k. k is 4.125, so this would be four, negative infinity to 4.125. If I look at it on the graph, it has a maximum. The ma minimum or the maximum is always k. So the maximum in this, in this case is 4.125. The axis of symmetry is always x equals h. h is negative 0.25, so my axis of symmetry is x equals negative 0.25. To find the y-intercepts, to find the y-intercepts, you put 0 in place of x. So in my original problem, I've put 0 in place of all the x's, done the math, and gotten a 4. So my y-intercept is 0, 4. Now, to find the x-intercepts, we should put a 0 in place of the y. And when I do that, what I have to do to solve, if I go back up here and look at my original problem, is use the quadratic formula or put it on my calculator. I'm going to go through the steps of finding that on your calculator. Put your function in your calculator like you're going to graph it. So when we graph this one, we see a parabola that goes down. So this is a concave down parabola. When we want to find the x-intercepts, we are looking at where this crosses the x-axis. So we want to take our calculator, hit second trace, go down to zero, 
our calculator will say left bound, so we want to go left of where we think the first zero is. Then hit enter. The calculator will then say right bound, so you will want to take your cursor and go to the right. Hit enter. The calculator now says guess, so you will take your cursor and go where you think it is. You're going to hit enter. When you do that, it tells you that the zero is negative 1.7, roughly negative 1.7. That's what you would have gotten if you had done the quadratic formula for this problem. So you can use that instead of doing the quadratic formula. That's your first one. You will have two because this crosses in two places. So you will want to take your calculator and go through all of those steps again to find the other answer. The other answer is listed on your review sheet. So you want to check that one and see if you can get this answer now on your calculator. Now this is problem number 13 on your review. It's asking you to find the minimum and the maximum and where this function is increasing or decreasing. So we would want to take this one and put it in our calculator, graph it, which I've already done, and take a look at it. This one has a maximum because it has a top to it. The maximum is always on the y-axis. I can count this one. One, two, three, four, five. The maximum is five because that's the one that's on the y-axis. For increasing and decreasing, you look at the x scale. This function is decreasing along this line. So it starts decreasing at zero. That's the x value where it starts to decrease. So it decreases from zero to infinity. It is increasing here, going up, and we're looking at the x line, so it is going up from negative infinity. It stops going up right here, that's zero, so we would be going from negative infinity to zero. When you check your review sheet key and you look at it, notice that increasing and decreasing always has parentheses around it, never use brackets. This is number 21 on your review sheet. The problem actually tells you that y varies jointly with the square of x and the square of z and inversely with w. Jointly means the same thing as direct variation. Direct variation means that all your variables are on the same line. See, we have y, we always have k, and we have x and we have z. They're all on the same level. When something's inverse, it's below the line. So the things that are inverse are below the line. The problem also tells us what to substitute in for those numbers. So I've substituted those numbers in. Remember that k will be left blank because you're trying to solve for k. So we do the math. 2 squared is 4 and 3 squared is 9. 4 times 9 is 36. So we end up with 500 because we have 50 times 10. That's where we get the 500 equals 36k. In order to get k by itself, we divide both sides by 36. So k is 125 over 9. What we're going to do is take the k and substitute it back into the original problem. So if I look at what I have now, this is k. Here's the rest of the problem. So my new equation is y equals 125 x squared z squared divided by 9w.